just start to get to familiar with the inner workings of, of both Linda and Chuck. Yeah, I remember having that dinner, and I think I had at that point uh, a hairpiece. We were messing around with a hairpiece, thank God. That's my real hair. <laughs> um, you know, the most important thing, obviously, is that we feel comfortable with each other. So that was the main thing. I didn't worry at all about playing Chuck. I mean, uh, being, being Chuck Trainer somehow. Oh. I did no research into Chuck Trainer. Um, <clears throat> I mainly wanted to serve the story. I, I had like a lot of resistance to playing this role. It's, it's weirdly emotional for me. I didn't want to do it at all, zero. But I couldn't let it go for weeks. I, I walked around thinking about it. Everybody kept asking me, are you gonna do it? My wife was like, what's wrong with you? Um, I was just sculling around the house from room to room, sulking, sitting down, thinking about it, going like, why do people offer me these parts? <laughs> I'm not like this. I'm such a good person. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you. The the truth is, I do. I have two little girls. I have a a, a six year old, and I have an eight month old girl. And this material is incredibly disturbing for me. And I don't like playing it. Um, but obviously, I needed to for some reason. And that said, I mean, I watch it, and I'm very proud of my work in it. But <laughs> but I know I have it in me. There's this whole part of me that I've been so eager to explore and share as an actor that there's maybe traces of in this role and traces of like my resistance to playing the guy is in the performance. You know, trying to be. I would come across scenes where it would say like, he offers her up to be gang raped, and I would be like, this scene can't happen. I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do this, it's horrible. Um, and I think sometimes that resistance will put you in the reality of what you're doing, which helped me. But that said, I am looking for optimism, <laughs> if anyone has it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Just sort of tailing on that question, uh, this is for Peter. How, how were you able, or were you able to find any empathy for this character? Was, uh, the question is if Peter was able to find any empathy for his character. Well, I start out with me, and I have a massive amount of empathy for me. So, <laughs> um, everyone has lists of, we all start out as babies. And I got a baby. And then these, some of these babies grow up and be you know, for one reason or another, dysfunctional and screw ups in the world and do horrible things to people. So if you start out with a baby in your head and then just add on from there, I don't really, I don't have much explanation for how I do what I do except that the most important thing for me is that I love who I am. I think there are very few people, I just, you know, it's, I'm, empathy, I don't know. And I don't worry about the real guy. Yep, in the middle. Was the the purpose or aim of the film to be anti-pornography? We didn't set out with an agenda. Our agenda was to tell the story and to uh, to start a conversation. And interesting, you um, you could have told. Uh, Latter, more about her story later in life, and she was more sort of uh, as an activist. And be, do you sort of maybe chose to just focus on what you did? Yeah, well, you know, once the once the Linda Chuck relationship ended, the drama of the story was was over, really. Uh, and we wanted to acknowledge her activism, so we took it as far as her writing the book and going on Donahue, which is really the beginning of her speaking out as the new Linda. Um, and that's really as far as we thought the film could handle. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just add to that. Uh, 
we felt like we queued up her activism, that we took it to the point where she was psychologically ready to, be caught, to enter that next phase of her life, and that was really the end of our story, the story we were telling. Um, yeah, okay. I have two questions about Linda. Did she ever find her first child? And second of all, how many children did she actually have? Question is, if Linda ever found her first child, and then how many children did she have? Well, interesting enough, when we were doing research, we found uh, an internet search that Linda was doing for that child that she put up for adoption, um, and she never found she never found the child, uh, and she has two children who are uh, here with us and and grandchildren. She has uh, four grandchildren. Her children told us that they remembered her sitting at the computer searching for that, searching for the baby, you know, that child. Uh, oh, and one thing I will add, we screened the film for her kids before Sundance just so they'd have an opportunity to just see it uh, and respond in their own way. And afterwards they said to us, uh, they explained to us that they're both in long-term relationships and that neither of their relationships had ever met their mother, uh, but now they feel like this movie will give them the opportunity to share their mother with, with their partners. So that, that meant a lot to us. Uh, let's do uh, two questions. Um, you had your hand up. question is about, um, so much of the film is about parents' relationships with their children, and was that a, a big reason why they took the film on? Yeah, I mean, it's very much a, a theme, and I think maybe unconsciously that's something Jeffrey and I might have brought our own perspective on that. Um, as gay men, you, uh, we have to go through our own coming out process and our own um, kind of sense of self-identification and figuring uh, finding our own voice in that and, and then finding a way to reconnect with family. So uh, I don't think that's, you know, I think that's uh, something that Linda had to go through in her own way. So I think that might have been an unconscious connection on our parts as directors. We have time for one last question. You had your hand up first. talking about the structure of the film and how the first, it's sort of split up into the two halves, you know, the one surface part and then the follow-up, um, the, the true story. Was that always your intention? Or it, yeah. it was. That was our intention, and that was really our pitch to Laura and the producers. That's, that's what got us the gig. Um, and then we worked very closely with Andy Bellin, the screenwriter, to, to realize that in his, in his screenplay. Our idea was to try to mirror both the way, uh, the way that we learned about Linda's story, uh, you know, we as the public at the time, uh, these, you know, these, these, two, these two narratives that seemed so contradictory. Um, and we also wanted it to mirror Linda's psychology as she was able to get to the point in her life where she was able to look back at that experience and see it in a, in a new way. That's great. So please help.